Oh, it's time to keep an eye on these cards. I know we do a lot of these, but they're always things worth discussing. Make sure you guys smash the crap out of that subscribe button so you guys don't miss out on more Oscar content. We're going to start off over here with Future Visions, and I kid you not, this is, this is actually quite interesting. So recently, there was a gimmick puppet deck that showed up playing our, do I need to say, our favorite set rotation card. And when set rotation is typically running around in the format, you're going to see people experimenting with so many different field spells because the idea is hand your opponent the worst possible thing that you can hand them. Well, Future Visions, for those of you that don't remember this, this is the Fortune Lady field spell. It says, when a monster is normal, summon is removed from play. The removed monster is returned to the field in face of attack position during its controller's next standby phase. Now, wait, wait a minute here. This forcefully removes any normal summon. So what in the world could we actually, I mean, what's relevant in the format here? Uh, blinking a Tempai Dragon. Obviously, you know, they can still just go grab the, you know, ability to Sengen Kaiman. So, I mean, because this just removes the monster. So the summon of the monster would still technically trigger on the summon, on the stack. It's just, it's blinked out as a chain link. So that's, okay. What about, what about a Dark Beckoning Beast? I mean, that's, okay. What about an Ariana for Labyrinth? What about, what about in the Gimmick Puppet Mirror Match? Taking away their normal summon. Huh. That might actually be good. That means that they're going to have to work a little bit harder. And then you've also got to think about it like this. If, 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 also, you know, with Tenpai, they could also have their own field spell, so it'd be unaffected. But the biggest things you got to think about here are what does this card give me the chance to do as a field spell to kind of assist me and punish my opponent? And the fact that it was seeing play kind of set off a warning sign in my head, and I was like, oh, Okay, well, we, we got, definitely want to talk about this as well. So keep an eye on that. Next up is the angel statue as Rune. And for those of you that are like, when the world is this thing? Well, this is an old super rare from way back in the day. Actually, I'm saying this way back in the day, but this was actually kind of a, a recently released back out here. Um, I don't even remember. I just remember it came out as a common as well in MP22. So for those of you that don't know, the little hair, our little Link 2 monster, that gives you the ability to set a trap card. Basically, you can set any trap monster directly from your deck. And, oh boy, there's FTK shenanigans already involved with the hair. But that's that's not what we're here for. What we're here is to look at the Angel statue and what the OCG has been doing with this card. So, it's a trap monster that special summons itself as a very light 1800 tag, 1800 defense. This is also a trap card. And then once per turn, when your opponent would special summon a monster or monsters while this card is in the monster zone, you can send to the graveyard one continuous trap card in your monster zone that was special summoned from the spell and trap card zone. Negate the summon if you do destroy that monsters. And once card the monster zone is destroyed by battle, you can destroy the monster that destroyed this card. So you get a couple of interesting little things with this. The thing that the OCG has been doing with this is they're basically using this as a deterrent to uh, basically kind of do what SP Little Knight does in a lot of these scenarios where you force your opponent to kind of like waste a battle phase to kind of clean up the SP Little Knight. Um, we've seen that all far too much out here. SP Little Knight kind of turns into one of those cards that you're like, oh, okay, so now I'm forced to, you know, it, identify and deal with the problem as it stands. And yes, yes, you are. And I do think that, you know, while this card can negate a uh, summon, which, I mean, is pretty good in and of itself, it's also 1800, and it's also searchable off of the link, too. That's, that's the thing. This is a one-of that you're able to put in your deck. And you've also got other targets that we've seen people messing around with out here, but for now, I want to put a spotlight on this card. Now, Argent Chaos Force, a.k.a. this and anything in the gimmick puppet deck that's not Future Visions. So, we, as a community, we have seen what gimmick puppets could do, except for, you know, YCS Japan, where they just didn't showcase the deck. But it was there in the top cut. I'm, I'm still a little bit butt-mad about that. I wanted to I wanted to watch the gimmick puppet FTK do its thing. So, first thing you need to know. Yes, gimmick puppets, they have an FTK. Their field spell basically protects it so that only Xyz monsters can affect their stuff. Yeah, that's a, that's a little bit of an annoyance. This is why we're talking about, you know, using Vitos out here as a counter to this stuff. But you've got to remember... Anytime there's an FTK running around, the TCG is going to go, they're going to sniff out the bullshit, and they're going to go, 
I'm gonna play this. This is perfect. All right, whether or not it's a consistent challenger to the meta or not, the ability for people to be able to play this degeneracy is exactly what we're going to expect. So, I once again am putting the spotlight on gimmick puppet stuff here. We do have the lost art coming for the Drury doll, so you're not going to have to spend an arm and a leg on that, which that's that's a win actually. I gotta give it to Konami. Actually, using the lost arts out here for their intended purpose to actually you know bring down. Some of these prices on cards, I will say, it's definitely good. But Argent Chaos Force having that very critical secret rare is definitely going to be something that you're going to want to have. Oh, actually, it's the gold rare. You know, I think Argent Chaos Force is one of the coolest gold rares we had. I'm very negative towards these more etched gold rares we've been having recently. But the fact that you can get this card, and it's got plenty of common printings as well. Once again, this is to help you get ahead of the curve and make sure, hey, you know, we can keep an eye on this stuff. We can basically, we know what we're looking for on the top end of things. So good stuff, actually. I'm, I'm happy to see the gimmick puppet goodness. Drytron. So, this is a very interesting one because we are probably going to see some reprints for Nova. Honestly, I think Nova is the only real thing that you care about for this deck, right? Like, everything else in the Gimmick Puppet deck, you know, Medionis Drytron, doesn't... It's a couple bucks unless you want the... Uh, the beautiful collector's rare out here and then if you're or if you're watching this and you're like well i'm just gonna go buy the collector's rare well hey congratulations you have more money than what my average player base tells me that they have on this channel and then of course there are people that are like what do you mean you didn't buy the collector's rare it, it's very interesting out here but the new drytron stuff locks you into only ritual summoning well the good support card only locks you into ritual summoning machines typically your end board ends up being a what is it a dual-sided negate and then it gives you the ability to end on a Vanity's Ruler. I already know the Vanity's Ruler is an insane card, but let's be honest here. It's 100% searchable off of our dear friend Ben 10. So why in the world would you not be trying this out? All right, I know that Drytron Novas are the most expensive thing. There are people out here that will look at this and they'll go, hey, you know, I've, I've had the chance to pick this stuff up. I do fully expect Konami to go, hey, you know, we know Drytron support's coming here. Um, it's probably going to get the axe, oh, well, it's going to get the axe in value, I'm assuming, in terms of reprints somewhere. I'm not really sure, though. Um, I, I'm just, I'm sitting here, I'm, I'm talking about this as a pickup, and it's like, you got to use your judgment on this one. You got to go, hey, do we expect some sort of Drytron reprint along the way to, you know, reposition this card's value and destroy it? Or, you know, are you able to pick this up relatively cheaply? And the answer will be determined on what you think. If Drytron is a deck you want to play, if you're expecting this to be a tier one deck, though, no. Uh, you're going to be in the rogue category 150%. Now, let's talk about Ubels. So we've already seen Nightmare Thrones gas themselves up to numbers that people are already just hissing at. They're like, I can't believe this. And it's like, hey, you know, you could have bought them when they were 25s. You know, everybody had the opportunity to buy them when they were slightly cheaper. You know, that's the week one. You know, you uh, everybody's like, oh, you know, just wait till after week one when cards go down. Yeah, but unfortunately, after week one, people can see how good stuff is. So unfortunately, the duality of the argument here is things tend to go up. Uh, we do know the Phantom of Ubel is a card. It is the card that bridges the entire Ubel deck together. And we know it's coming to the TCG. We know the card exists in the OCG. 150% we're going to receive this card. Um, I just wanted to put this down and go, hey, whenever, however... We get the Phantom of Ubel. You better have your Ubel stuff ready, all right? Because the minute that card hits, I expect all of the Ubel cards across the board to go up even further beyond that they actually are right now, and people are going to lose their minds even more. You, you thought spending, you know, twenty five dollars for a throne very early was bad. What happens when Phantom of Ubel lands and the deck's, you know, weaknesses are curved even more, and you're just watching this deck? you know, make these consistent boards float with the throne, and you're just you're just going to be sitting here, you're just going to be dumbfounded. It, it's going to be hilarious to watch, actually. You're just going to be like, I can't believe you, Bell's an actual tier one deck. Yeah, me either. But you had the opportunity to get ahead. There are plenty of you, Bell players out here that have been waiting, and that's fine. You'll probably continue to wait. I just is kind of... That's the scenario. Phantom U Bell is going to drive these prices way more insane. So, uh, what do you guys think? Please leave a comment down below. Tell me what you guys think, and I'll see your beautiful faces back in the day, guys. Peace out. Patrons.
Thank you. Thank you so much for watching. Check out these other videos.